Okay, I'm folks. La I'm lame duck. I think we'll uh, call a meeting to order. So, Dave's going to have the temporary chair at 640, Dave? At 640? Yeah. So, if someone just has to approve, make a motion to appoint Dave Eddy as temporary chair. So moved. Second. Thank you. Okay, first item on the agenda. Um, we need to approve the agenda. Is there anyone, anything in the agenda that you'd like to add yes. or delete? We have to add, you wish we were deleting. We have to add a form from PVR, property valuation review, certificate, no appeal or suit pending. Just the listers are stating on this date, there's no pending actions from the listers or suits pending. So um, they sign it, and then the select board has to sign All it. All right, so. let's, uh, let's put that on the agenda, like, now, and we can deal. No, we want, Chris has got to sign it, though. All right, forget it. Well, y'all have to. Do you, where would you like to put it after, um, at the, after Dana or before Dana? Or? Um, let's, I don't care where you put it. Let's make sure Chris is here, though. Let's put it down ways. It doesn't, okay. doesn't really matter. Let's put it. Um, after Dana. After Dana. After Dana. Okay, yeah, I'm sure Chris will be here any minute, so. Okie doke. So, we, Ellie is here? Yeah, I'm here. Um, there is a new um, community um, uh, Leon say a new community person at Gifford. Um, she contacted me recently to say that, um, to introduce herself and say she wants to be um, um, doing stuff with uh, recreation with the community. And then she, um, last week, let me know about um, the Philip D. Levesque Memorial Community Award. Um, we have, years and years ago, we had um, received um, $1,000 from them. That was when we were doing the first phase of the skate park. And um, she let me know that um, this year they're giving away two $2,000 awards. So, um, so I'm asking permission. I'm asking permission to apply for that. Um, I know that other, you know, there's no guarantee we'll get it because um, there are a lot of people that apply for it, and it's it's a small. So I know. see, I see a copy of it here. Uh, this is the policy. Ask and yep. you review, or this someone reviews. Yeah. Let me approve that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it would go towards the phase two of the skate park, right? Yes. Yeah, it would go. The agree. brief description that we're doing is to let them know we're um, really um, ready to do the second phase, and we just um, need a little bit more help. And I figure the more money I find out there, the less, <laughs> the less than we need to, to ask sure. for, right. for the town. So, so that's, um, so it's, it's. Um, and there's no matching funds required. No matching yeah, so funds. Um, and they have, the family has come and visited the skate park before and nice. been very enthusiastic. I, I met uh, one of the sons years ago and he was very enthusiastic of what the skate park looks like and the attendance of, of young people that are using it. Anyone on the site board have any questions or Go issues? Through. Nope. Tenor, no, entertain a motion it. to uh, accept, allow, whatever that might approve. The Levesque grant. Uh, yeah, so moved. Okay. Second. And then I also have a request to um, for another fundraiser. Um, recently, I um, got word um, that a couple of organizations here in town have. Uh, fundraised at the rest area on the interstate. They've had wonderful success, um, and so I looked into it. I was asking them at the rest area if maybe we could have a slot, you know, in April or May, but there's so many organizations 
two organizations um, here in Bethel and Hartford Fire Department and the American Legion, all kinds of people um, do this as a fundraiser. And sometimes they, they have raised like $900. So, so it's, it's a donation, just, oh, you know, oh. yeah, make coffee, have apples, bananas, um, people, you know, whatever. Uh, it's between um, Woodstock and Sharon. The, okay, now the Welcome Center. I'm questioning oh, why welcome. we would need to give you permission. Oh, that's any, not that's Sharon property. Right. Well, no, um, any fundraising the Recreation Committee ah, does, yeah. I have to yeah, get permission. Okay. To make fundraiser. Yeah. And um, so anyway, they gave me the slot. They found an open slot, and that's February 25th. February 25th? 5th. Oh, 25th, thank you. Yeah. So. That's wonderful. Motion to allow. Second. Does, wait a minute, no. <clears throat> so how does the insurance work out? We need to provide some sort of. No, I mean, if it's, that would be the state. It would be if the state of Vermont wanted a proof of insurance, they would ask Ellie for a proof of insurance. But since they're going to be in the building, must be the state's covering them, or, or else the state will ask her to provide a proof of insurance, which right. we could. And um, they have so many different organizations. Oh, yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. It's a popular and, place for that. Yeah. Yeah, because you'd be inside. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so if the state wants a proof of insurance, they'll ask and we can provide yeah. it. Okay. I have a motion. <clears throat> Second. Second. Oh, okay. All right. You're up. <laughs> hey, thank you. you have a little authority. Right. Thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for helping me out. I came from a middle school basketball game that went right to the wire. Oh. And then there was a teaching moment afterwards with a student and a parent that I had to take care of. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I well, thank you for yeah. doing that for me. So we're, yeah, public comment. Yeah. All right, public comment. Uh, so if there's anything that's not on the agenda this evening, I'll turn it loose to in person and then we will go to um, to the Zoom. So, yes. I, I just have one, although it is related to, to the town meeting warning, but are you getting in-depth conversation about that tonight? I mean, you already signed it. How in that? All I wanted, I just wanted to ask that you consider um, if you have anyone that wants to speak, as I've done before, oh. on any of the articles, just to think about it between now. I'll be here for, uh, for the prior, the last meeting before town meeting to get all the information. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, Paul talked to me about something tonight. But, um, yeah, we're going to go through it at a high level tonight, and I guess we, you know, the few spots there, if, if somebody wants to volunteer, or, mm -hmm. or, I, or if we're lacking a volunteer, we can work out at that point. And you'll do the, um, Chris will do the budget overview like he usually does ahead of time. Remember, he stands up and does the budget summary and talks about that, which helps, you know, hopefully answer some questions of the audience. But. Yep. Um, some sure. people we're not sure about. I don't know if someone's going to be there from Morva or maybe no, Dave. No, I'm, I'm particularly concerned about select, select board. board. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Items. We can divvy them up. Yeah, we can roll through mm -hmm. that. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Ellie. Good night, Ellie. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll say I'll pop back the last meeting before town meeting just to get finalize all that. Okay. I'll make it. Over. Thanks. That's good. Anybody else in person? I'm just. Uh, are we thinking about ever putting the town, the town report online? <clears throat> yeah, I actually realized tonight it wasn't when I after I set up. I thought yeah. it was already online. Okay. So I just I made a note at the top of my page to have okay. Kelly put the PDF there and then release the link for Facebook front porch forum. And I actually thought it was up. So yeah. Very good. So it will we be. haven't got one yet, but maybe it's in the mailbox tonight. I, I just received mine today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Seems to be the consensus. Even though I don't think I had any mail for a week prior to that, but I got a big stack of stuff today. So I had a big stack today. <laughs> we have a new yes, we do. Post yeah, delivery lady. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. I went on the weekend. Yeah. Supposedly it's supposed to go back to normal. Oh, nice. Good. Great. Welcome, Doug. Been a long time. Where you been hiding? 
<laughs> yeah. He hasn't been out the for a job for a while, so we're going to see what's up. Uh, uh, All right. Uh, Lenny's online. I'll let you go first. Yes. Sean, um, I have a question here. Sorry, I nice stated it. This elect part has adopted the Declaration of Inclusion, which means the town has adopted this. I have been sort of monitoring um, what's going on at the Bethel School, the school in Bethel, and there's been a lot of transphobic stuff as we go. Just horrible things happening to students at that school. Um, I know that one young man who is multiracial has been called the N word several times to the point where his mother took him out of the school. Oh, yeah. Lord. My question hmm. is, is has the select board intervened or talked to the school or shared this declaration of inclusion with them to help combat this negativity that's going on that's not accepting the kids in their own school? And can the select board do anything to help with this? So um, I'm not sure if I sent the declaration of inclusion to the superintendent or not. I, I'm happy to do so. Um, but no, we have no authority over the school. We don't own the property. The school does. And kind of like, for lack of a better thing, like church and state mm -hmm. kind of, you know, separate entities. So we have no pull at the school, just like they have no pull over town matters. But I'm happy to send the declaration to, um, to, to Jamie. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. But not about, I'm not saying that you have an influence. I'm just saying um, the, t the school is a part of the is a part of the town. You are the select board. I mean, you can at least, can't the select board at least adopt something and say something about their feelings about what's going on there? Um, I think it, I don't think so. I mean, I'd honestly have to ask, I'd have to ask the town attorney. I'm not, I don't know. It wouldn't carry any weight, Lenny. It'd be just like a. I disagree. Well, I mean, I'm saying from like a, we have no pull over the school. Honestly, I think that voters and residents have more pull than, certainly than the select board. But I mean, do you know if people are, are attending the school board meetings and said? A lot of stuff is going on. People are attending, people are Good. Um, shaming people for speaking up for plans, shaming people for. Um, Days, they're shaming people on the, in the school board. They're, talking, they're doing things and saying things that are not actually factual about them. Oh. I am trying to get them dismissed from their positions. <clears throat> that being, I'm not saying the select board has influence, but the select, but the select board's input, just like my input as a person, um, has weight. You have not to influence, but just to just to say that. The select board on the side of the community, um, learning about the differences, and working with the children. No child should be displaced because of who they are, who they think they are, and no parent should be threatened or afraid for the child in the school. In right. the school, in a learning environment. So, learning, I, let me answer. Yeah. So, I would say, Lenny, um, as far as the town goes, no. Uh, I mean, could we do stuff, but will it actually influence anything? I, I will say that I'd be more than happy to sit down with you directly, Lenny, because I am on the school board as well. I'm not going to talk for the school board tonight because it's not my position tonight, but um, I'd be more than willing to talk with you in regards to uh, what is going on at the school board uh, because there is a lot of misinformation out there about what is going on. Um, so I, I would say right now the best way is is to go through the school first, which would be um, directly through a principal, um, or there's also um, Dana is the equity and inclusion coordinator at the school. Uh, you could reach out directly to her. Um, she normally she normally attends most of the meetings, um, and then as well, you know, bringing it to the school board itself, um, I would say would be the starting point because. Well, even she is being attacked for trying to create diversity in the school. No. No, and that's not true. So uh, you and I agree upon a lot of things, Lenny, but this is not one of them. And I, I'm there every time, every meeting, and I've been through every single thing there, and there's a lot of misinformation going on at the school board right now because certain individuals want certain um, extra privileges that didn't happen, and now they're, they are shunning school board members and twisting words to 
to better agenda items. So again, I'd be more than happy to sit down with you, Lenny, and tell you everything that I know. Um, not today, or tonight. Um, well, there's only, there's only the side that is public, and I've been to every meeting, so I know the side to everything. And I know the piece that you are alluding to with, with an individual, a school member, board member, we'll call it being attacked publicly, and that's not true as well. So um, do have all the information on that. I'd be more than willing to sit down with you, but I don't think this is the place to do that tonight. Yeah. Um, I, and Lenny, with yeah, I I will send the deck. Yeah. Well, I mean, the schools because you unionized, it's this whole White River district. But I will send tomorrow the declaration of inclusion of Jamie if I haven't already. Um, absolutely. I, I, I couldn't disagree more. Uh, with all due respect, but if, you can disagree. If, no, but you don't have all the information. I have the right you to do speak not have as a select board you member do. at a this select a board meeting. Boys. Policy right now, guys, guys, and boys. you're going to go way off topic right now because you don't have all the information. I sit on that board and I know all the information, all of it, not what people are making up to further agenda items. What's happening over at the school board is embarrassing right now, and you know what? It's not the board's fault. Nobody's so let's stop, let's stop the misinformation here. This has nothing to do with the town business. Nothing. Nothing to do with the school board. I am talking about if he has information from a student or anybody else that they are being treated disrespectfully and contrary to what we have said in the statement that we adopted. It is appropriate for this board, speaking on behalf of the town, to say that behavior is not appropriate in the town of Bethel. We have gone on record to say it is not. It is appropriate for this board to speak for itself, not to address the school board, not to try to solve any of those problems, but if people in our community and in our school are being uh, abused, we have a responsibility to speak on behalf of the town as a select board and express that we have adopted this statement for a reason. I would suggest that if this is going to be ongoing discussion, that I reach out to um, do a little bit of research to see what is appropriate, because I'm not sure we would want the school commenting on you know, town business, but let me have a chance to look at, into, this article, into this issue and maybe put it on a future <laughs> agenda, um, just because I don't know what is, what the, how the statute is on this, and I would hate to do something that the school has, we shouldn't be doing again, it. the school has all the policies in place to take care of any type of behavior that happens in school, not just race or gender based um, issues that happen at school, which unfortunately those do happen just like other stuff happens at school. They have all the policies in place at school to deal with that, both policy wise and state law wise to deal with that. If there's issues happening at the school, which I can tell you that I have not heard about these individual ones right here, I will look into it, but I'm, it, this isn't a widespread thing going on at the school. It's not a wildfire. Maybe there's a couple of cases of it, just like there is everywhere. But the school has all the policies in place to deal with it, so if something's happening, not we, but individuals should, should talk to those administrators to follow up on that and have questions about that. But for the town of Bethel to be micromanaging the, the school is ridiculous. But even, I'm but Lenny, even if I'm we. About, let me finish, please. I am talking about the fact that the Declaration of Inclusion was adopted by the Select Board, and this Select Board governs this town in that respect. And as Jean just eloquently said, the Select Board can say, this is what we're doing, this is what we've adopted, we want you to be aware of it, so forth and so on. That's not governing the school, that's not jumping into the school, that's stating what the town has adopted. 
And if they haven't received it already, that if they didn't know we adopted the Declaration of Inclusion already, that's troublesome to me that the select board has not put this out there for all the town to know. As a, as a, as a member of this town, that's troubling to me. Well, you adopted this just in name only, so it just sits there and you have it spread around the town. That's troubling to me. Very, very troubling. Well, it is in the, it's in the town report. We put it on our website right away. If I didn't send it to Jamie, that's, that's certainly my bad. We put it on the website immediately, um, and we did a, I worked with Al and did a, um, a, a, what do you call it? You know, a, oh, why can't I think of the word? Where we put it out for, to let people know, and, uh, but if I miss the school, that's, that's my bad. I'd have to go back and look. But it is on our website. It was right away. It's in our town report, I think in two places. And, um, and then, yeah, we, I did do a um, oh, press release. Sorry, that's the word I couldn't come up with, Lenny. So, so we, okay. we did do that. I worked with Al, who was super helpful, by the way. I mean, I'm not, I'm not assuming that you did. I'm just saying, they didn't, if this wasn't done, yeah. then that's trouble. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll look and see, because I don't remember if I sent it to him or not. And honestly, in my day-to-day -day work life, I don't think about what's at the school. So um, certainly that's my bad, but I'll rec I'll, I will rectify that tomorrow. And, and Lenny, I just want to say I apologize for barking at you. <clears throat> now, it has been a very frustrating um, go at the school board because there's a lot of things um, a lot of topics at the school board right now that have mm -hmm. spiraled in many different directions, and, mm -hmm. and none of them being proact uh, productive or being positive. Um, so there's, there's a lot of influences on different sides, and I will say they're not even local influences. They're non-local influences that are creating this havoc in the school, and I will say that I get a little emotional because I try my best to make sure that every single person in that school, in this town, is treated the same no matter what. And, and I do fully believe that we have the right policies and there are gonna be bad actors and when those actors happen, we are gonna fight aggressively to take care of that, those behaviors. Um, and I, again, I'd be more than happy to sit down with you, Lenny, and, and, and field any questions you may have and I will definitely uh, be a liaison to the school board to ask any of those questions that you guys might have. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yep. If you don't have his email, Lenny, just send, uh, if you let me know, I'll give you Chris's email if you email me. I'm not, maybe you already have it. But if, if you don't, I'll provide it. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Okay, that looks like it for public comment online. Anybody else? Um, I see Owen's on there and Paul. Okay. Anybody else? Anything else uh, in person that might have come up? I want to make this comment for us, the uh, town highway department. During this past winter, I have checked some of the roads and stuff out, just getting out there. And I must say that they have been doing an excellent job out there. I was, I was kind of, I was kind of surprised that they stepped up as much as That's what they did nice. and what they had. <laughs> you so, were kind of surprised what? I was surprised. I, I, they did do what they had mm -hmm. done, what they was actually had to do. Oh, I, was, I, was quite, I well, was quite proud of their actions. Oh, you know what? You, I'll make sure I tell Morgan. He'll be happy that you're happy. So mm. that's very nice. Thank you. We've had some equipment. She was in all the normal mm. stuff that you're aware of. Considering our down equipment. Yeah. Good. I don't yeah. know. I think they're going to be out with shovels in a bucket pretty soon. But, <laughs> but um, you owe thank me later. You, huh? <laughs> you owe me later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but thank you, Doug. I appreciate that. And I know it'll mean a lot to Morgan. So. I, um, I know you worked together for a long time. So. Therese, who else is on the Zoom? I can't read that bottom. Um, so Owen Paul. is on, and then Paul Hansen, Leonard Meek. Okay. Julie Kraus, Orca okay. Media, yep. Yep. and us. Yeah, okay. I couldn't read Paul's name there. Yeah. All right. All right, no further <laughs> public comment. We'll move forward. Um, so we have uh, an appointment to the Planning Commission. I think, I believe you had brought it up last go around. Oh, he, you put him on the DRB last oh, time. This right. time, yep. PC needed the, it's an unusual one because yeah. the Planning Commission actually has to vote to recommend. So that's, we just- You didn't barely, have that last time. <clears throat> no, because yep. we didn't have a quorum. <laughs> so, or okay. we didn't think we had a quorum. 
So we do do now have that yep. um, in place for Dana. So okay, we got a motion. A second. Okay, second. All in favor? Yep. Aye. Aye. All right. So moving forward. So yes. <coughs> so planning commission, you're at what now? Four. Um, let me see. Not There's, count yourself. Okay, Rick, Denise, Adam, Zoe. Dana. Five. Eric Webb, six. Oh, good. Okay. But I'm not, yeah, I have a couple I'm not sure about. They're going to And what's the, what is the DRB <laughs> board sitting at for individuals um, right now? DRB is Rick Benson, Chuck Washburn, Penny Griffin, Owen, Brad, Brad Andrews. Okay, so they're sitting uh, Because decent. they just lost one, huh? Yeah, I think, I thought I started with her, no? And, um, but he's, it's like six. he just lost one. Um, but Dana just came on board, so um, because uh, somebody moved, sold his house. I can picture him. Yeah, the Keith. Keith, cabinet. thank you. I'm like, yeah. I'm yeah. just losing. He's over in yeah, Stockbridge. Keith. <clears throat> so Keith now. is getting off. Yeah, which is yeah. too bad because he was a big help. So okay. we added this form yep. underneath Dana. So it's the certificate or no appeal. It's the the. Um, Listers in the select board certify that on this date there are not any appeals pending from the action of the listers nor suits pending to recover taxes under protest relating to the 2022 Grand List of Bethel. So uh, the listers sign <clears throat> and the select board signs. And I don't remember ever signing one of these before. You sign one every year. Do we? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's just like this. That. We sneak it in yeah. under the radar. So. Okay, so we'll take your word for it. So we just need uh... <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Going out and win. All right, so we just need a motion to accept the certificate of no appeal or suit pending via the um, listers for 2022. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So I'll pass this around. You just need to sign this one. Yeah, I'm on the right. <clears throat> oh, I thought it was fancy paper there for a second. Yeah. It's just the way the coffee is. It does. It looks like it. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, and then we have liquor licenses. And yeah, at and this point, it's like it's like there's really no power. It's like why do we well, even do them anymore? Because, I mean, you do. The state have, has their own form that we can't sign or touch. And yeah, you really have no power of anything. They're doing all online now, so yeah. it just says the. Um, it's. Uh, so second class liquor license yeah. approval I mean, of if, if somebody Wesco had, and Sambor. Had an outdoor, um, hey, go, Gene. if somebody had an uh, outdoor seating, outdoor consumption area, was doing music, you know, had hours, then mm -hmm. there's certainly more into it. If, if back, yeah. you know, years ago, you used to be informed every time somebody had a violation, but they don't yeah. do that anymore, so. Yeah, it just seems like we're just so <laughs> distant from the whole process I mean, now. Yeah. And then, now that they started their own online form that we don't even yeah, get see. to yeah. write on or. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. So just need a motion to accept the second class liquor license for uh, Wesco and Sambor. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Wesco oh. is who? Champlain Farms. Okay. Just get that out and, there. Yeah, Sambor is on the tape. sandwich shop. <coughs> and we have the annual adoption of the Vermont, or the town road and bridge standards annual financial plan for highways. Yep, this is something we do every year at this time, so it's two separate forms. So mm -hmm. this comes into play when FEMA uh, comes to town. If you have any damage, they look to make sure that we've done this. Also mm -hmm. for um, getting grants, uh, state grants for VTRANS, we need to make sure that we have done you know, both. And we work with Two Rivers to make sure that happens. And then obviously the annual financial plan, they fill in the top right from the state, and then we fill in the winter maintenance and I mm -hmm. sort through what's what and then kind of do a split of the remainder of the budget. <clears throat> okay. Any is, this any, is there any variation from uh, what we've been seeing every year? Sure. You know, I'll take the, I always try to take the same amounts. I didn't bring last year's for you, but they're pretty similar. Obviously this one's higher. You know, the, um, our description, our expenses are a little bit higher this year, which, but not by a ton, you know. Well, that's, that's, I'm just talking about, we haven't added or deleted any miles. 
I guess oh, my question. No. <clears throat> no, and this isn't about that. This is um, this is about just us certifying that we're in compliance with the town road and bridge standards in our network inventory. Mm -hmm. And then the annual financial plan is them telling us what they're going to give us for money, and we're telling them what we're going to spend. What we're spend. spending. Yeah. So they're going to give us 154000 and we're going to spend 883000 So um, that's... Okay. That's really, that's what it is. It's just kind of, they like to, they like to know what we're up to. And this form here, we don't have to include any grants or anything like that? that we no. Have? no. No, because um, I just see where it says major construction projects. Or last year we had put in, um, like we were going to possibly 75000 for the town garage, and we didn't do it. If we, once that, if we do that, we would put that in here, but no. All right. So just need a motion to adopt the annual Vermont Road or Town Road and Bridge Standards and annual financial plan for highways. Move to adopt. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So there's two for you to sign. Here's <coughs> this is highways and here's the <coughs> Then, oh, I thought Rick was st sticking around for this one, but no. Therese did, huh? Therese, did yeah. they add something after, after the agenda was approved? Um, did Dave did add it? something we were going to talk about after the day of call vote. Oh, we added the, oh. Certificate of yes. no appeal or suit pending. For the lister. PVR. Yes, PVR, yeah. If yep. you just write PVR, I'll fill in the blank for you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> so how did you want to do this, Therese? You wanted to do the, um, go th just quickly run through the warning quick? That's what I, I mean, Just to keep it on everybody's mind and then, yeah. <clears throat> and then I can just do some highlights of the budget. Yeah. If anybody wants to hear about it and yeah. then, and then we'll talk about the, the bond vote phase two water project piece. Yep, and then right? next Monday on the 20th, we'll have our special meeting, which will be, this mm -hmm. will be the only thing on the agenda. And then we have another, the, thank you, Jean. And then on the 27th, we do our, um, you know, you have to legally have an informational meeting next Monday is for town meeting, so okay. we'll do it on the 27th as well. But in the past, we've always kind of done it at this meeting too, just in case you had more okay. attendance. Yeah, and again, we have a, Bit of a full agenda for town meeting day this year. Yeah. It's been a while, so we're just gonna <laughs> definitely have pie before you go because it's going to be a while. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have to talk about when lunch is going to be served. Uh, so just the normal stuff that you know, electing the town moderator, um, town clerk, and treasurer. Those are always um, always done. I believe we have somebody for each one of those spots currently. Yep. The, um, and then we have the two select board member positions that are open. So Paul's position, um, which is a three-year term, is open, as well as my position, which is a two-year term, is open. Um, and then just for anybody that's new to it, if, if you do want to run and you're there on town meeting day, you have to make sure you have somebody there that can make a motion to uh, point you, yeah, um, you to get the ball going. <laughs> yeah, I was Hopefully you. somebody will second it and then <laughs> you'll have a chance to vote on you. So, um, and we do have the, um, we have two lister um, appointments. Um, so we have the, the balance of a three year term, which is one year's left um, to succeed um, Pam Brown, who f had been filling in this year mm -hmm. that was appointed. And then there is a full three year term um, to succeed Judy, which I believe she's rerunning. Yeah, Judy is um, running again. What, yeah. Is there somebody running in the list, the, the other lister spot? I don't know. I don't think so. Not that I'm aware of, unless Pam ends up running to do the last year for them. I don't know. So there is a there is a one <clears throat> a balance of a three year term, one years mm -hmm. on the lister position, and 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 those those type of positions are like the perfect ones to get in if you want to, maybe you're not quite sure, but you, 
you want to take the leap because you're not committed for three years, you're committed for one year. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice one where you can get in and <coughs> kind of understand the process. It takes about a year to kind of understand what you're doing um, serving. So if anybody is looking, has some, I don't even say you have to have experience, but if you yeah, have a, be nice. a willing to want to go out and look at houses and, yeah, and take control of the, of the, um, the grand list yeah. and... Um, yeah, there's a lot of training that you have yeah. to attend, and it's nice if you have either banking or real estate or... And it's a nice one because you, you could just serve the one year out on the term and you could say, ah, well, it really wasn't for me and I'm not yep. going to re-up. Or, or you could say, well, I really liked it and I'm going to re-up. Yep. So exactly. it's definitely a good one if anybody wants to, to look at that. Yep. Um, and the lister, you know, uh, other than uh, Mo and Judy, I mean, we... <laughs> We have been struggling yeah. to fill listers. Thank, <laughs> yeah. thank God we have, you know, two, uh, a family that's, that's doing the listers. Yeah. Um, because other than that, we wouldn't have anybody. And, yeah, and you, you know, we're, we're only as strong as our grand list. So yeah. without the grand list, none of the budgets happen. No, um, school or towns. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're starting the town-wide reappraisal in July. So if someone's interested in becoming a lister, that's also, you know, really mm -hmm. good training too to... See how and it is that. a paid position. It you is know, a paid uh, position. Call it part-time paid mm -hmm. position. Yeah. So opportunity to earn some money. Um, then we have um, the trustee of public funds. We have two. Um, so we have a, a full three-year term, and then we have a balance of a three-year term, which is one year left. Um, is Paul, are you running for that one? or? No, no. <laughs> and Sandy is running. And again. Sandy is so. Mm -hmm. So again, there's on Paul's end, you know, there's, you know, the balance of a three-year term, one year. So, you know, all right. if you want to have the opportunity <clears throat> to get in and and see what what that's all about, and I mean, how many, how much hours do you think that you put into that one? Paul? It's really minimal hours. Sandy <clears throat> takes care of the financial end of it. Um, She's the, you know, an accountant, so signatures. she takes care of that. So it's a lot of signatures, but it's kind of interesting to see where all the investments have gone and how some of the old time, like uh, uh, the Whitcomb estate, you know, left money 50, I don't know how many years ago, 50 years ago or, or more, and to see how that's all developed and, you know, so it's interesting stuff, but yeah. it's mostly signature signatures and... I spoke to Sandy, and I know, because um, Rick Benson is the other trustee yeah. of public funds, that she's hoping someone will run um, for the balance, the one-year seat that you've vacated, because they need to do some research, because with yeah. Carol Ketchum's passing, mm. the current trustees aren't, you know, want to get, need to get copies of the wills and understand, you know, the trusts yeah. and who left what yeah. and what are the bequests, and, and there's some yeah. questions. and. Some of the, the money that was left over was designated for certain things, and, and mm -hmm. some of those things have happened, some haven't, but in the meantime, those funds are earning, earning more dollars, and so yeah. we Yeah, it'll be interesting. I think they'll end up- Trying to pick up after Carol is- Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very yeah. interesting. Yeah, so it's definitely, be, it will be an interesting time if yeah. you want to be a trustee. Yeah. Yep. And, and then we have the, um, the budget. Um, vote, which is the um, you know the the full amount, um, which you know right now is 2.655 million. Um, local revenue taxes, which is um, local revenues or taxes, are things that we collect here in Bethel. That's not not tax re or not home tax related. So right. it's dog licenses and and things like that. Yep. Um, so the the amount. To be funded by the taxpayers would be 2.164 million, um, and, and that I'll, doesn't include the library, the recreation facility, or the playhouse or yep. the social services. <clears throat> They'd be voted on separately. So then we had um, um, so a little history on it. So we had the the town of Bethel's library. Um, so they have been using an endowment. Right for yeah, their endowment, yeah. Um, I don't know, ever for um, years. And then, of course, you know, through through the last 15 years or so, the I mean, interest rates haven't been there. So, you know, they're not really using the interest anymore. They're they're drawing down the overall um, balance on that. So, yeah. so they were in here back in August, maybe. No. Yeah, and then they came back recently when we were July, doing July, August. Warning. So we were talking about you know what. <clears throat> 
what's the vision at the library? Or, uh, you know, because they had asked us, typically we just put like $2,500 a year in there, and then last year they asked for five. And, it went and this seven. year they asked for 75, and we said, well, what's going on? And, you know, and, you know, and they said, well, we're kind of running out of money. And, you know, so, so we sat down with them and said, you know, what do you really need to keep the library functioning? So, so we have decided to increase our budget with the appropriation, but there's also this extra money would be what we really need to fund that library every year at a minimum. So this is just a barely, we'll call a minimal functioning mm -hmm. library um, that will keep them from withdrawing the, the principal balance of their, their funds. So. I think they were taking about 30,000 a year and then they realized it was probably costing them what, 50 to 80 a year yeah. to, to run it. And, and so when um, Bennett Law joined the trustees, he was really a big help to them and kind of sat down. And so this could just be it could be more next year. You know, we're mm -hmm. not really sure there, um, but uh, they put a nice write-up in town report. So if, did you get yours yet? Denise, so, you got, you're looking at Joe's. Okay, but, Joe's yeah. yeah, so. I mail at 10.30, 11 o'clock this morning. It said all mail is not up yet. Okay, so when you get that. it, there's like a two-page spread in here in the town report that really talks about the library and they, uh, Lisa Campbell and they, mm -hmm. the trustees worked together and kind of explained what's going on, so. So as a board, we felt that rather than just putting the money in the budget, we felt by adding a separate line item, it would open a discussion point for us at town meeting to say, not just approving you know, the extra, because uh, really the goal is we need to give $35,000 a year minimum to, to have that library yeah. function. But mm -hmm. I think the goal is to have a conversation with, with um, the residents of yeah. what do we want to do with the library? Do we want to fund it every year at this minimum amount? Do we want to go more? Or do we not want to fund it at all? Because it, every community does things a little different. Like Randolph, for instance, they fully fund their library. I think so. Then there's other communities that partly fund it or, or maybe don't fund it at all. Yeah. So I think it's a good opportunity for us to have a conversation on town meeting day and see what, what direction we want to go with that library. I also think it was an eye opener. Not everybody realized that the Bethel Library is its own entity. Right. They're not a town department. We don't own the building. We have really their, their own thing. So I think that that was something that people were like, really, it's, we don't own it, we don't run it, they're not a budget? I'm like, have you ever approved one? I'm like, no, they're their own deal. And uh, so I think that might be an eye-opening conversation for people to say, wow. And, and again, my this taxes is, were paying for the library, but they're not. And so. again, what we're looking for, that's minimum, you know, Could be. minimum Could be. budget. I mean, they have a lot of things that need to get done there. There's, there's accessibility pieces to it. There's yeah. technological advances there. Um, yeah, I mean, Bennett Laws said something about the fact that uh, an average library that size is about 150 grand a year yeah. to run. And they were doing it on like 80, yeah, 60, like 80, 80, and they were yeah. a shoestring. Yeah, it was it was amazing. So, so we have that on there. Um, I, I guess if um, if we're talking about potential people to talk to, that. Uh, we, we figuring that somebody from the library is going yeah, to yeah. have I a think discussion that, about yeah, that? Yeah, Bennett or Lisa, I'm sure, will be there. Yeah, because we told them they had to be there to, when the article came up, they had to be there to talk yeah. about it, just like the next one we told Ellie and again, when they I came to the meeting. I think it would be good if not just asking for 27500 mm -hmm. but maybe have some sort of discussion on the roadmap of mm -hmm. this library and what that looks like or... And we did talk to them about that. We told them they could also put a, a, a printout on the seats of, mm -hmm. you know, the, of at town meeting. So we've given them enough information that they should be prepared. Okay. And, and then the, the other piece of it we had was the recreational department had come back to us about um, phase two of the skateboard park. Um, so initially what they wanted to do was they wanted to recategorize some of the current funds that are in the... Um, recreational department fund that wasn't set aside for the skateboard park. Um, and we had decided as a board and committee <clears throat> that instead of reclassifying um, money at this point that we would ask the voters for, for the amount. Um, I, I do believe that there are some um, bumps in the road on, 
cost of you know the cost of things have gone up, and I think their budget's getting kind of constrained on doing it. But I think they needed thirty thousand at a minimum to make the second mm -hmm. phase of the park go. And they're willing to um, cut it depending on what they, you know, depending on um, whether it gets approved or not, what they're willing to scale mm -hmm. back to. But they did have a grant of $25,000 from the Land Water Conservation Fund with a $25,000 match. And that mm -hmm. had like an accessible sidewalk that has to be built. So even if they don't get all their money there, in order to get that 25,000, they have some things they have to do. Mm -hmm. And um, so. And then at the same time, we have some additional work that's going to have to be done over at the pool in the near future. Um, you know, some renovations <laughs> at the pool itself. Yeah. <laughs> and some if we cost. want to continue to have a pool, there's those costly every couple decade things that need to happen. Yeah, and it's... one of those is coming up. So um, so we were, I think, I didn't look today, but mm -hmm. we had what, $90,000 in the fund or something like that? Um, I think so. We had, oh, I can tell so you. It's about like right, 90000 or something. So we didn't want to draw the fund down anymore because we're probably talking about a Massive. We don't you know, know. Quarter million dollars or more to do pool fixes here in the near future. So yeah, the rec fund had eighty-seven thousand. Eighty-seven at the end of okay. June. Yeah. yeah. So it's and we're still getting prices. Obviously, we have the staff member who would normally do that has been out since middle since beginning of November. So, <coughs> but the fiberglass lining is failing and it's <clears throat> leaking where the skim baskets are. So when after Irene and they built the pavilion, when it comes out from the building and it's blue, like from there out, it's older, like underneath the fiberglass that the pool is actually blacktop, which I did not know, mm. which was, or I didn't know where, I mean, I've known for a while now, but what I thought was interesting. So it looks like from the blue part over, we're gonna have to dig it up. And so that it's gonna be costly. So certainly the select board didn't wanna deplete the money. and any money that had been voted at town meeting specifically for the skate park, the skate park has already been given. So, so hence the select board said, mm, go to the voters. Let's yep. see. Skate park getting used a lot unless there's a special event there. Is it being used a lot? Do you think? That's what the rec committee says. Yeah, they, they say that there's people there, you know, frequently and, and yes, they have done their camp kick flip. And yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Dietrich did say last year when the pool was open that she saw quite a few kids there, mm -hmm. um, you know, around the time if they weren't at the playground that they were also at the skate mm -hmm. park. And I think too when school is in session, maybe after school it gets more, but mm -hmm. you know, hard to, Hard to say numbers. I mean, I don't know what the correct usage <clears throat> would be of the park, but when I, I drive by there every day, so I see it being used more than I thought it would be. Um, <laughs> so I, I always see people over there. Um, now, I don't stop to see if they're skating or what they're doing, but there's always, <laughs> there's always people in that general area doing, partaking in something, so. Has there been any liability for the town yet? Yeah. No, no, we have signs up and we, um, met with, talked to VLCT, our insurance company, before, and, and there are no wooden structure there, which is nice, because that has caused problems for other towns, because they let their wooden structures fail, and then, of course, someone gets hurt, and, mm. you know. So, um, no, we haven't had any, honestly, have any, any issues, so. But as we're seeing in the budget, there are certain things, preventative things, mm -hmm. that we have to do every year. Um, yeah. You know, so there's sealing of the park and things like that, so you'll see in the budget that there's, I don't know, $1,500 or something yeah, to seal like seal it. You get to seal it once a year or every other year or something like that. So every year, to yeah. To keep the concrete um, positive, so. Yeah. Um, so we also, um, the social services piece of it uh, didn't really change much um, dollar-wise from year to year. There was, I think there was a couple that came off the list this year that didn't ask for services and a couple of, of the current services had increased a little bit, but the, the offset was pretty similar, if I remember right. And, and Paul, you willing to talk about yeah. that oh, at yeah. town meeting yeah. day? And yeah. ha have you had any identities that have reached out afterwards to ask, curious um, on? No, we just had Safe Line send us a nice thank you note for, for their, our consideration of their uh, request. I didn't know if anybody said, hey, we didn't make it in there. Or nope. Anticipate anybody asking, you know, to no. be added or. Okay. Nope. Um, and, and then um, we have the White River Valley Ambulance. Um, you know, that once we get going in the budget, the White River Valley Ambulance was quite the increase this year um, over last year. Um, it had been going up at a rate of, 
I don't know, less than 5% a year. And, um, you it know, was, yeah. took a significant 20% yeah. increase. There was a couple of years we didn't so, have any uh, that they were, you know, level yeah. funded. So this was a... I think some of it is they hadn't really done much of an increase over so many years, and obviously some of it's just inflation, fuel. Um, I, they staff they staffing. had mentioned staff paying staff more. Yeah, they did, um, and they well, took, they have they some hit. new new financial people too, don't yeah. they? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I know. I do know that yeah. they took a big hit. Um, you know, like the rest of us, their insurance, their health insurance premium went up like twenty one and a half percent. And just staffing and having to pay for professionals, their salary had to go up, which is understandable. It's a, you know, niche market that they have. So, um, so yeah, that was a big increase. And I'm but percentage wise, that was probably the biggest jump oh, in our budget that we one had. I've certainly seen in five years. I assume David Aldrighetti will be there to speak to that. Um, I can make sure. So if Paul's going to do this, Ellie will do this, the library will do that. And I'll get Dave Aldrighetti. I'll text him about that. And, and then we had, um, um, there was a petition that was done to add to the warning. So number 15 is to authorize the expenditure of $1,000 that would go towards the Playhouse Theater in Randolph. So, um, so there's kind of two avenues to put things on the warning for town meeting day. Um, usually um, the the most common option is to come before the select board and ask for it. Um, but there's always the, you know, if you get so many signatures, a percentage of the, of the, um, of the list of voters, you can add an item yourself. Um, so that's how that had come about was, um, yep. there were individuals that had petitioned that and got the, the amount of um, signatures and have asked for a one-time donation of $1,000 to the <laughs> theater, so. I assume Bennett will talk about it. Um, would be my guess. I think he's the one who handed in the petition. So I'm assuming someone will be there. That they, I think they also did multiple towns. I don't think we. And I think there. what would be nice to understand is, like, when it comes before the select board, at least we kind of get the story behind it and why, you know, like, mm -hmm. like is this the library again? Like, are they, like, are they in trouble and they need money to stay open? Yeah. Is this going to be a recurring ask? You know, right. like, what is the story behind it and. I mean, even though it's not in Bethel, I mean, quite a bit of us use that. Um, I know I take my kids over there quite often, mm -hmm. sit in yeah. there. And so I don't know, because yeah, we don't know, so I'm does, sure. I guess the question is, being that the Playhouse mm -hmm. and the drive-in are owned by the same identity, correct? I don't think so. No. Oh, no? Oh, I thought, why was I thinking they no. were? That's part of the issue. The play, I believe they are. Aren't they? I don't think so. so. The, play, the Playhouse is just the yeah. Playhouse has just undergone a re a, a restructure. Yeah. Uh, they are no longer owned by who they used to be owned by. Right, because oh, okay. they're it's not. It's now a nonprofit organization yeah. that is running it. So this. What, what is the Playhouse? That's the theater. That's the yeah. theater. Yeah. That's yeah. the theater. Okay. okay. Yeah. So there's what, no, no that's affiliation between the two of them anymore. Says uh, how or what affiliation there is between the two, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Because it used to always, I thought there was an affiliation between. Because you'd see the same common mm -hmm. individuals, staff. Well, that that may be yeah. at one time, but it, oh. but now, recently, in the last yeah. eighteen months or so, yeah. Yeah. the the, Different the theater, yeah. the playhouse, has become a nonprofit corporation, yeah. and and so their funding is very different than it was used to be. Gotcha. Sure. It's it's not a membership organization in mm. the same way. Yeah. And that would have been a nice, like, well, that's the I, conversation. That's nice the conversation. The, that's the background the backdrop that would of, have yeah. been helpful. And I, I, I don't have all the details. Yeah. I just happen to. Well, I think it's interesting because some people might first look at that and say, why would we fund something that's not in our town? But then so, you think about there's a lot of us that do go to I, drive in and to the theater. And I, yeah. Because we heard it a few years back for something in Randolph. Yeah. I think it would be helpful. We might in invite Bennett. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll reach out to him. To, yeah. to come and, and be able to nice explain to that to, the, yeah. Yeah. to I'll, the town. I'll email him because I'm assuming he's also going to be there to do the library mm -hmm. with Lisa. So, um, but I'll send Bennett an email and find out and say, you know, you got to have somebody here. Because hmm. people might have questions and we can't field them. Right, right. I don't know, so. And then 16 is just normal. Um, yep. 
when Therese wants to make everybody pay taxes. So those dates me. are on there. It's all about Therese. Okay. Um, and then um, 17 is, so there were, there were some, um, just looking here, I lost my spot. There were a few 17. things that have been a discussion point at the select board um, and or at the state for a couple of years, but due to COVID and um, we had elected two years in a row of doing the Australian ballot that, that these topics couldn't get raised during um, Australian ballot because it wasn't our traditional way of voting. So now that we're going back to our traditional way of voting this year, that these items can be put onto the ballot to be questioned. So, um, so we had you know quite a bit of discussion over the last couple of years on Australian ballot itself, um, and we talked about either the whole town meeting going to Australian ballot or do some sort of hybrid, um, like in this case, looking to put the. Um, to vote by Australian ballot, the town officers only. So people would vote for the town officers only, but then all the other traditional pieces, you know, the budget and, and those discussion points would be had in person. So that's, that would be the vote that we'll have on, on number 17 is by um, electing our town officers going forward by Australian ballot only. Yeah, and so if that passes, it obviously would become in effect next year. So, yeah, in next year. March of 2024. So if you look at the warning right now, you would just take off your your um, town officers and then the remainder of the list is what we would do in person. Yep. If, if that is the way people want to go. Yep. So that is on there and um, so number 18 is, maybe Therese wants to talk about it. Sure. Shall the town provide notice of, so basically, this was actually a question that someone came to us um, and brought to us, so we, I gave the select board two different um, warnings, and this is the one they signed. So this is going to be a vote at town meeting on the floor saying, do we want people to, to um, would send out a postcard telling you when town report was ready and where you could pick it up, maybe at the library, the town office. Obviously, if you call, we'll mail you a copy. And it would be online, and we would put the link out on Facebook, front porch form, et cetera. So what this would do, would it would save you the cost of shipping it, because we all know um, that a lot of people read just certain pages out of the town report and then it goes into the recycling. So I think what you would see is, I think this year we printed 715 copies. So you would see a reduction in copies printed so that people who actually want to read it would would request or pick them up. And um, and then other people may just read them online. So it's on there, it's either yay or nay. So you'd still be notified. You just wouldn't be sitting home waiting for it to come in the mail. You'd just be waiting for a postcard to tell you where you could get it. So, um, and to change the delivery mechanism of, of your town meeting day information, it has to be done by a vote. Yep, absolutely. Um, so that's why it was put on there. It's not something that the select board can just say, no. yeah, we're not going to mail them this year. Right, voters so, have to vote on So it had to be voted on that. Yep. So that was someone came to us and asked about that. And so that would be the end of the, um, what we would do for in person. Well, there'd and, just be 19. Well, I guess well, he'd do 19 after we discuss yeah. these, yeah. So the, um, and then there's the Australian ballot pieces. So there are, there are two pieces that have to go uh, before Australian ballot. So the first piece was another topic that had been um, discussed here for two years or so yeah, now. At least. Is, so when the state approved um, local municipalities to um, have retail marijuana, it then um, needs to be voted on locally at, at your town level. So, yep. so the state said, we're good with it if you're good with it, basically. Um, yep. Now, um, we elected not to do it a vote on it last year. Um, and we have put it on there this year because there has been one identity in town that is looking to put a retail uh, marijuana um, store in effect. So this is one that has to be voted by Australian ballot. The piece of it that, um, that we have to talk about is this is a piece that once it becomes, so let's say we accept it as a town. So if we accept it as a town and let's say a retail place opens 
And then let's say a year later, the townspeople say, wait a minute, we don't want this. And we vote it out, right? It grandfathers the person that has the retail establishment. So just because we decide as a town to remove that, which we do have the power to do, the individual that has the storefront would still be grandfathered until they decided not to do it any longer. So, mm -hmm. so that would be the piece of it that, um, as a town, we would have to think about because it's yeah. um, we can take it away at any point to maybe stop somebody else from putting a storefront up, but the person that has the storefront is in. Um, so that would be something to, to talk about. And we did have one individual yep. that yep. wanted to put one um, down in the Main Street area. Yeah, and um, that are looking to do that. So. Yeah. And remember, this is just cannabis retailers, so yeah. growing is not a permit that we even issue. The state yeah. actually issues that permit. We got a couple hundred dollars from the permit fee, <laughs> and then, but and we could not legally disclose the location, which is right. weird because we're the town. We should be able to tell everybody everything, right? Because what we do is public record, but this you can't do. So I thought that was interesting. So in some ways, they're kind of treating the retail marijuana similar to tobacco and yeah. liquor. Um, you would have to have, we would have to have a, a board. Mm -hmm. So even though we're the wearer of hats of all kinds of things, you know, we're the, you know, the liquor control board and things like that, we would have a, a marijuana board now. Um, yeah, a cannabis control board. As well. Lenny has his hand up for a question. Yeah, and the cannabis control board is a whole other thing we'll have to talk yeah. about. Are there, are there zoning, zoning regulations? We can't, you um, cannot legally zone it out. So what happens is if the only place someone could have a cannabis retail shop is wherever retail is currently allowed. We cannot legally zone it out and it's only allowed in specific zones. Like in our case, it's allowed in the village, village. district and um, maybe the core. Sort of, sort of right, but yeah. the state was very clear. We legally had no right to, we ha can't zone it out. So they're, right. they really and covered the. Like yeah. I was wondering how close to the school it could be. I don't know about the school. That's yeah, good, huh? they don't really say, yeah. um, Lenny, <clears throat> about that. You would think so, right? Because of, but yeah. they don't. They just. But said, technically, are, it could be. It right could next be to the school because that's part of that zone, right? Yeah, because you have a hmm. car salesman shop across the street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't think it's getting. I don't. It's basically was just where we can do. Um, Currently have commercial zone. Yeah. All right. Someone else. Oh, Owen has. That is his a good question because I didn't even think about the school piece of it. Yeah. Owen has his hand up. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> it's also something that we have been thinking about because, like with the school um, scenario, it's really on that entity, the school, to have to enforce its no marijuana policy on the campus. And similar for us as a bar. You're not allowed to um, use or possess marijuana inside of a bar with our liquor license. And so I think there is, there's some stuff to think about there for the other businesses about what it would mean to have a cannabis retailer. Um, for us, especially right across the street, we <laughs> really create some things to hmm. really have to think about. Um, yeah, I never that, thought about that, that yeah. they can't be, it makes sense. I mean, I don't think, and I think it says in the, in the, legislation that they can't, you know, smoke on the streets, that sort of thing. It's it's really just a retail sale. Purchase, yeah. Yeah, like only. they can't open, you know, yeah. no open container. But I didn't think about it from your point of view, because you're right, you're right across mm -hmm. the street. Yeah, we could lose our liquor license if an inspector saw any kind of marijuana use inside of our building. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess they're... Yeah. It'll be a big discussion, I think. Yeah, <clears throat> and and we had I wouldn't say kick the can on it. We we had felt as a board that there was no need to bring it to a vote prior because no one had asked and, to put yeah. a retail um, establishment in. But um, in some ways, we're kind of obligated to put it on there if somebody is asking. Um, yeah, you know, if, if we decide not to, that person could they go could get petition. signatures and get petition, which mm -hmm. doesn't take many signatures. I think it's like. 20 yeah <laughs> and then they could have it put on the warning anyways which i'm sure everybody can find 20 signatures so yeah um so um the you know, only part to the australian ballot pieces is it's not like we're going to be up or somebody from the town will be up at town meeting day really talking too much about it because no because that 
will be going on in the same building. Right. So, um, so there won't be really any discussion. The discussion will be had in the informational meetings and our two more board meetings leading up to <clears> it. So. Right. <clears throat> Oh, no, lots. That two hundred dollars yeah. was from a where they were doing a, a grow, where they were growing marijuana. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know what our permit fee is going to be, but it's very minimal. The yeah. state said it, and no, we cannot. The state didn't tax it, you know. So it was really interesting. They tax cigarettes and candy and alcohol. I was really surprised there wasn't Season. more of a tax base yeah. that they created for cannabis. But no, and we can't. Um, we can't. Some lo call it out and local option tax it or in some communities nope. when this happened about two and a half years ago I think, I think yeah. some communities instantly put it out there because you know I'll make it up like Williston for instance has a localized tax right yeah so they could not well one you, they were potentially losing out on money right if they have a realtor come in and they charge one percent tax on whatever I'm sure that's whatever you know thousands of dollars to someone like Williston right so if Bethel had a localized tax already, then you could get that as part of your localized tax. But being that we don't have localized tax, it's pretty much treated like a liquor license. Yeah. I mean, it's, you get basically nothing. No, and, and um, we talked about having a cannabis control board and that, mm. the information on that is pretty vague. We're not gonna, the cannabis control board is really <clears> not gonna have a lot of say about anything they're just going to have to review it to make sure it adheres to zoning regs so and the state says if you don't have a local cannabis control board that's fine um they don't need you to do it they'll approve it themselves right just so goes at the state level <laughs> so it's a <coughs> i think there's and it is challenging it, it's going to be more challenging <clears throat> randolph just opened a cannabis not randolph the town of but someone in randolph just opened a cannabis so it'll be interesting to see what kind of issues come up that we're just not aware of yet, um, you know, like anything else. So, yep. all right. <clears throat> so that will be the first Australian ballot, or that will be one of two things. And the second piece of the Australian ballot is we have the what we're calling phase two of the water line um, that we are looking to do. So a little bit of the background information on that is so. The state had come to us three years ago. Oh, more than that. Four years ago. <laughs> four years ago. Let's, years. let's call it four years ago. So the state had come to us and said, you know, you are out of compliance in certain areas. Um, and that they would be willing to work with us um, over a period of time to get us back into compliance. Um, and at the same time, we have aging infrastructure. You know, every time you turned around, we were digging up something. <laughs> right, Doug? Digging up something. <laughs> Fix it, fi you know, fix the water leak, right? Mm -hmm. So we've d we did that many, many, many times. So um, phase one was to um, take care of our aging infrastructure that was way overdue, but at the same time work towards the compliance piece that we're out of. Mm -hmm. While we're out of compliance, we're not allowed to add any users. So let's, we don't have a large mm -hmm. footprint in Bethel to add anyways, but let's say a, a small little developer put in three little houses, we couldn't add them to the system. Um, so we have to get back into compli full compliance before we can add anybody to the system. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> phase two is, is continuing, um, <clears throat> continuing towards compliance. Yep. Um, and there are certain infrastructure that, I wanna say maybe wasn't put in correctly years ago, but you know, like uh, Crystal Drive for instance, um, you know, doesn't even meet the minimum water pressure uh, ratings. So putting in a booster station and providing water so they can use it. <laughs> um, so there's some of those project projects tagged onto this. Yep. Um, now, if we vote the bond in or don't vote the bond in, we still have to get into compliance somehow. So yeah. it's kind of a catch 22, like the first phase one of the water line, and we'll get into it here a little more in a minute, mm -hmm. but maybe we can segue into yeah, it. <clears throat> the first phase of the water line, we were combination very lucky as a town. Um, uh, we were able to, the total amount was two point. We voted in 2.8 million. 2.8 million is what we voted in and we are on the hook for right now about 900,000. So a lot of that was loan forgiveness and grants and some of it was um, 
what they call the lead subsidy, even though it's not directly lead pipes, galvanized pipes, or any of that stuff we took out of the ground, we get one for one money on it. So instead of us being on the hook for $2.8 million, we're on the hook for 900 and something thousand. So that, that project went better than expected for us. We Financially, had, yeah. We had went with the bond vote and said, this is where we think we're gonna be. And after everything got done, we were you know, here. So that went very well for us. Mm -hmm. The phase two piece of it is, again, very, very reasonably priced towards the last one, except for some less subsidies on this one and as we're seeing interest rates going up. So the, the biggest challenge on this one is really gonna be, we're gonna be paying interest on this loan where the last one we didn't have to pay interest on this loan. Right. Um, and, and we're, yeah, I mean 1.5%, but, and the other thing too is we didn't, we are gonna get lead subsidy, but go ahead, Joanne. Now is that <clears throat> water paid by all our taxpayers? No. Or is that just for the people who in that water? Because I well, paid my own water. Yeah, the first phase was completely put on the users. Okay. And the second phase, we're actually um, talking about, and, you'll, and if you, it's in the town report, but we also sent an additional mailer out that's gold color that you should be getting. Um, the, um, what we're talking Does about. Even non-water users get this? Yes, because okay. it's a town-wide bond vote, so everybody has to vote. So what we're saying in this one is that the debt be shared by the water system and the taxpayers. But the taxpayers will pay for the road work, hydrants, and those costs only. So the water line, you know, all that sort of stuff, the booster pump station um, will go to the water users. All we'll do is, because this is going to affect um, Bicentennial, Highland Ave, Graham Street, Crystal Drive, we have Sand to do a boring under the railroad, Sand Hill. Um, but I hate to say Sand Hill because we did get a separate $600,000 yeah. earmark for that, which will rebuild the road. Um, so what I did is worked with the engineer to just pull out just the road costs and the rest of the costs would go on to the, to the water users. And one of the things that's, that's good and bad at the same time is the median household income for Bethel and across the state jumped. That's great, people are making more money. So in turn, we don't get our disadvantaged subsidy, which we got in the last round. So which there was is- I don't know the amount off the top half? of my head. Um, no, I, I don't think it was half, but it was a good, it was 25% of 25, I think it was 25%. And, it was 25? Uh, yeah. I think so. And, um, it was a large chunk of money. It was, and so we're not gonna see that this time, and, and um, <clears throat> the engineers were saying that a lot of towns are not gonna see that, and so while it's good, it's bad. But we are gonna see this still one-to-one -one lead subsidy, so if it's a galvanized pipe in the ground, um, then we get a one-for-one one match on replacing it. Um, so that's so it's one of those things. And at the same time, that you know we're working against each other because uh, Denise and I can attest as being members of the planning commission, we have been working with Two Rivers to another grant to increase um, what's the word I want density of you know allowing more people to maybe turn their places into apartments and this and that and add more stuff within certain. Um, zoning districts. Well, that's great, but we can do that in the town, you know, through zoning, but the state says, no, until you pass your bond vote and you do this, that, and the other, um, we're not, you can't add any new users to the system. So um, I actually did just find a couple, oh, last week, I think, a thing that Tim had done, kind of talking about, you know, and I gave a copy to Richard saying, okay, we were gonna do phase one, phase two, then there's a period of time, and kind of how many <laughs> phases we need to do and over what amount of time, and it was interesting because I saw his <clears throat> estimate of this one, and of course, uh, little did he know that due to COVID and inflation, that that price tag would go from here to, you know, here, so. So it'll be a little bit of a difference, you know, this yeah. time around on, you know, uh, 2.5 million, we're probably looking realistically about 2 million we'll have to fund ourselves. So yeah. a big difference from last time. Um, but again, if if the if it doesn't go, we're gonna be, we'll, we we'll still do have to do something and we could lose potentially the little bit of subsidies that we do have left. Um, yeah. So it, it, we're kind of in a tricky situation on the phase two one. We would move forward with another, like if it doesn't go in March, we'll we'll come back at it again because we don't really have a lot of choices here. We, the state has us over a barrel and 
I, you know, and, and we want to take advantage of any money now that they have because it could be, you know, disappearing. But um, so I was just thinking. So with the phase two, I should ask this question a long time ago. Mm -hmm. With the phase two water, does this bring us fully up to compliance with the state? It will. They will. Yes. Once we do the crystal drive pump station, they will allow us to add users. Okay. That's the thing that they're holding on to us with. Yeah. yeah. So. <clears throat> All right. Be covered. <clears throat> do you want to go any farther into the water? I mean, I think that bond you know, vote while we're on it. Letting people know that the there is a golden colored mailer that's going to be coming to you. It's also in your town report. We'll be having a discussion about it next week on the twentieth. Um, I'm going to release something on Front Porch Forum Facebook. I think it's out, but it's on our website. And just you know, letting people know this is also refurbishing of the Boulevard water storage tank, which is. I think everything to do with the water is costly. Um, we said constructing the new pump station to alleviate the pressure issues on Crystal Drive. Um, we're also going to be tearing down the Geico well house that's um, across from the school on Turgeon um, and Carrier property and building a new well house because that one is in pretty rough shape. And right now it's actually like, have you ever been in there, Doug? It's like three levels. And so we're actually going to level it out and make hmm. it all one. Um, and again, this is waterline for Sand Hill, Bicentennial, Highland Ave, Graham Street, Crystal Drive, and a direct boring under the railroad. Because of the width of Bicentennial and Graham Street, I'm pretty sure that we'll end up with a full width pave there. Crystal Drive is just the apron. There's not much pave there. Highland, it's going to depend. I think that the waterline is maybe right down the middle of the street, so it may be us using depending how much we can get from the um, contractor, we may end up you know, putting a little money in there to get full lane pave. And then of course, Sand Hill, <coughs> excuse me, water, hydrants, et cetera, I'm out of the bond, but the bigger rebuild of that road comes out of the $600,000 or $600, earmark from Senator Sanders. So they started with no match and we got a $150,000 match, but, um, Will so that'll be good, uh, and that'll get stormwater as well. Graham, Graham Street, Graham Street is two levels, so yeah, it's just the, the upper level will come the off bottom. the yeah. uh, auxiliary pump. I, I actually don't know. I can't. I can't tell you the engineering of it. I Graham don't Street know. is level yeah, 107. It and then is. Denny Stern's house is way uh, up there. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how they'll redo it, if it's just for Crystal Drive, or because I'm not aware of anyone on Graham Street having water pressure issues. I'm only aware of Crystal Drive having pressure issues, so I don't know. Can't answer your question, sorry. Well, Denny's far enough below Crystal Drive, maybe it's, he, maybe, he doesn't, mean, they don't have the pressure issues. But I haven't heard, been, yeah. you know, made then aware of that. And there's Bunny Huntley sure. out on that other yeah. road. Yeah. And there's a, there's <clears> more <throat> houses out there. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and we did get all the signed easements and everything from um, the Adams to build the, you know, to build that. So at this point we have all of our, I think all of our easements, or well, I have a temporary construction easement, but everything else is signed. And then the so likelihood after this phase that we'll... Do another phase is a few years. Pump the brakes for a little bit and see yeah. what's going on. And I mean, probably, you know, as we all are experiencing, you know, things are getting more expensive, interest rates are going up. so. It very well could be a hold pattern for us for a little while yeah. until costs come back down and interest rates come down. And yeah. But hopefully this work, you know, again, this is work that should have been spread out over 40 or 50 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so trying to do it all here in a couple of years is difficult. Yeah. But uh, yeah. What is the timeline to have? Let's say at least half it completed. You're looking for five years or. The complete water system, system itself? Yeah. Oh, no. I think that <clears throat> Tim's schedule went out into, let me see. I think it went out in like, let's see, we had did these two phases. Then we still have to do phase South in front Main. of the town office, North Main, River Street. I feel like there were four more phases. So, and I think there was a pause of maybe like three years mm -hmm. or four years between this one and the next phase. And then, you know, and then a bit longer. So, um, uh, and obviously, too, we have to take advantage of when is the state, well, when is the state going to come through and pave? Like, they paved in front of the town office not long ago, so we're not going to cut that up tomorrow. But if we also have to time stuff when we know they're coming to pave. We're going to want to get our stuff done the year before. So, um, but the idea, Doug, is to have a, money. 
you know, from what we're told is that the system should be on a 40-year cycle. So 40. 40. So we should be, you know, I'll make it up. If it's yeah. five areas or six areas, that should be divided up over 40 years of, of work. So, you know, essentially you're doing one every, you know, eight years. Yeah. Um, where right now we're in phase two after two and a half years. So, um, yeah. but it's just been so long. Um, and we're trying to pick off the, the bad actors faster, right? The, the pieces that, you know, I'm sure you went and dug holes in the ground more often. So we're trying to get those out of the way mm -hmm. and have to deal with some of the um, engineering lapses that, you know, weren't looked at when it was first put in, like the yeah. pressure and things like that, so. Yeah, and part of it too is, of course, is, you know, the two existing, <clears throat> we have an existing two inch galvanized, you know, steel water mains. and. You know, eventually, as they get older, the lead is supposedly in the galvanized part. So as that fails, it's it's just something that we need to deal with. And especially because the EPA is giving the state money, it's being funneled through the state for us to get money for lead subsidy. We got to kind of do it while we can. So, so we're really hoping that obviously the bond bill passes. Is work that has to be done. I know the people on Crystal Drive are just want this done because those people, a couple people have pressure, like they're basically sucking the water out of the water line. And in a couple homes, you can't use water upstairs if it's running downstairs. And that's just not right. So we need to, you know, it just should never have been added to the system years ago. Yeah. And some people have had to happened. purchase <clears throat> their own local boosters yeah, for their right. homes. But <laughs> the problem is, is that takes away from others as well yeah. when you do that. So, um, so trying to correct that. Yep. On to the budget wise, we're just, we're gonna just do a high level look at the budget. The next two meetings, we have the informational and yeah. kind of more budget, but tonight we're just kind of high level. Um, so overall, the, the revenue end of the budget's up $56,000 over last year, of which pretty much all of that, $54,560 of it, is due to the sale of the transfer station. So we had sold our interest in the transfer station to Royalton back in July. So over five years, we will get a payment of $54,560 over five years. So that's where that extra revenue has come in into play for this year. The, the total cost to our budget has gone up by $263,000 over last year. So it's, it's a large number for our town. Uh, and probably if you turn on the news, you know, you're seeing a lot of that. Budgets are up 10%, budgets are up this and that. So there's a lot of, a lot of that. And to break it down more on kind of like what is going on with the budget, um, so out of that $263,000, $35,000 of that is just strictly benefit increases. So that is health care, retirement, those pieces that have gone up. So healthcare went up 21.5% this year. Um, so that is what we're absorbing in this budget is $35,000 worth of um, benefits for our employees that have increased. The, um, and then we have $80,000 of the budget that I have categorized into what I would call inflationary pieces. So that is things like um, fuel and, and uh, salt and things like that that have gone up over last year. So that is probably the, one of the largest movers in the budget is just what we call things that we don't really have control over mm -hmm. unless we wanna take away services. Um, so like just an example, salt, we did a really good job a couple of years ago, remember Doug, we were up like $100,000 we were paying in salt a year and now we've cut that, had cut that down to $60,000, $70,000 and now the new salt prices have jumped so much we're looking at like 90,000 plus now. So salt alone has gone up 20, $25,000 over last year. Crazy. Um, so that, those are some, and obviously fuel, uh, just diesel fuel makes up like $30,000 of that 80,000. So plowing the roads and doing maintenance to the roads and things like that. So um, the next piece of it, uh, there's $60,000 of that of what we have, um, increase to take care of all of our grant matches. So um, good news is that Therese has worked really hard to get a bunch of grants for the town. 
So as she talked about, we have the sand hill um, piece. So the, what we'll call the uh, road work of the sand hill piece, we got a grant. Um, of course, with that grant comes the matching funds that we have to put in that too. Um, Christian Hill um, Road, we're gonna redo the- um, 0.79 miles. Eight tenths of a mile. <laughs> Basically where the black top looks like this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that we have a grant that, that's actually out for bid now. Mm -hmm. um, so we hope to do it this year. So there's match money in there. Um, Pleasant Street, we have a sidewalk grant that we got for Pleasant Street. So the sidewalks kind of, um, uh, the triangle down From towards John the school. Giffords to the school, yeah. Is much needed. Um, so we have that grant. We won't do anything there this year, but it'll be It's like a four next or five year, year grant. Year We're just after. starting the, getting the um, engineer. I actually just got three proposals I have to read and, and rate and then so that's kind of an engineering planning study. That's a couple of years, and then it goes out mm -hmm. to bid, and so it's you know it's not happening tomorrow. But yeah. that's the section from John and. And those are one of those things that our goal mm -hmm. is to get that project in and done with before they come back and repave the village like they did, what seven, eight years ago mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So sure. probably in the next five or six they'll be back through here. So we want to get that project done, and then we have the Peavine culvert. <clears throat> Oh, Peavine, yeah, we're going to replace that bridge on Stoddard Brook at the base of Sand Hill. You know, it floods every year. So um, we, I did get a structures grant for that. That'll happen in the spring of 2024. I was hoping to do it this yeah. year, but I can't because I'm going to have Sand Hill closed and I got to have a detour. So, um, so that'll be done as well. So, um, I mean, all four of these projects is, is hundreds of thousands of dollars to match the grant money. Obviously, mm -hmm. we're not putting a hundred something thousand a year. It's just right. our schedule rate this year. To, to make that all work is we've put $60,000 in there. So it's an increase, but it's also, you know, we're getting 80, 20 money or 90, 10 money. Yeah, um, so a majority of that work is being paid for by others. Mm -hmm. um, and the 600,000 is a, is a give me. That's, we're, you know, we have the 150,000 yeah. match, but they end up, do, you know, we got an 80, 20 split there. And, we're also going to have another, we're going to do a project on, well, yeah, half the town tour. We're going to do part of Gilead and Wright Road, culvert ditching project there, and on top of Macintosh. So we are going to have, you know, if you live in Lilliesville, you're going to be good. <laughs> so we're not going to touch anything over there. or on. Yeah, Gilead but you Road. weren't good a couple of years yeah, ago we when we had yeah. the spring flood. So, yeah, so, so. we're, um, you know, so we're definitely going to have a lot of road work out, but we were, you know, we Landed, I don't know, a couple, three million in grants. So, so. 60 on that, and then we have 30,000, which is just some highway um, garage changes. So that's mostly on, we've identified that to get to a proper gravel roads maintenance um, that we, you know, currently our budget to put gravel on roads is not nowhere near what we need to maintain these. I mean, as, as Doug knows, there's not much <laughs> gravel out there. It's, you're, you're reusing the stuff that's been there for a very long time. <laughs> so um, we, we kind of looked into it, you know, the, the experts say that a seven or eight year cycle is kind of the um, average life cycle to your gravel roads um, to add base to it. So we've increased some money in the gravel um, to do that. And then on the sand end of things, a combination of sand has gone up a little bit, but we're also trying this year and we'll see how it goes this year and if it so far, works out so well. We um, adding some manufactured sand instead of just doing all natural sand. So natural sand is round. Um, and a majority of the time, like Doug knows, is you sand it and it all goes to the side of the road. And it, and it does no structural value to the road itself. Mm -hmm. So you put sand on and the sand goes to the end and it doesn't do anything. And it has a lot of organics, so it becomes slimy. Yeah, so, so. so what we've tried this year, and it costs a little bit more money, is we've done some manufactured sand. So it's angular sand. Um, that we can put on the dirt pieces when, let's say it's uh, those like That's really really nasty um, rainy days and mm -hmm. you know there's packed down, is we could put that on. But the good thing is, is after we're done with it, those chips will stay in or around the road and add to the gravel base. So we're hoping that even though it might cost us a little bit more in winter maintenance, it's, it's at least helping the, um, the base of that road where the sand, you just have one use for it, which is just helps you out for a day or two, and then it's just useless. So mm -hmm. 
Um, so if that does go well, which we've had. So far, so good. I will say people are confused about that a bit too, because as Doug could tell you, manufactured sand going on the road looks differently. When you spread the sand we used to get, it was organic and it was very dark. So mm -hmm. people are like, you're not sanding the roads. And we're like, no, we are. We're using manufactured sand. So it's building the road base. It's just not that same dark dirt color that you're used to. Yeah. So you really, can't see it as well. More so chips. people are, yeah. we've been trying to educate people and say, hey, you know what, this is better for you. It's not gonna be as dusty. It's gonna stick in the road. It's not gonna create this slime that, with a lot of organics, so. So we're hoping um, it'll help us out on two ends. We yeah. can build a stone base and it's a good yeah. traction for the winter time. Yeah. Um, $10,000 kind of overall increase was the constable. Um, so we have, yeah, well, open the whole can of worms. You know, we, we have, um, you know, promised um, the townspeople, you know, 20 hours a week service. Yep. Um, we currently get six, maybe. Um, and, and really that comes down to, um, we have two constables, they're, they're pretty busy doing their other work um, that they haven't really had a lot of time to come over here. Or if they do have time, other identities pay them more money. So. Why go to Bethel for make it up twenty dollars when I can go get thirty dollars an hour, staying where I'm at? So, so we looked at it as two. We we did look at a couple of different things of you know potentially contracting out to a sheriff's department, and those budgets were very expensive. Um, so we tried to do something more in the middle of we've increased the budget a little more so that we have the ability to pay the constable a little more to attract them to come and do their 20 hours of yep. service that we would really like. Um, and Therese is in the process right now of getting those confirmed <coughs> commitments through them um, that we want to see you. Yep. You know, either each one, one does 10 or one does 20 and yeah, one does nothing. Justin but Justin has been on and Oscar's um, been on. And so it, it's kind of, yeah. so we're looking at that. Um, worst case scenario, if we don't pick up those shifts, then it gives Therese some money that we could use some contracted help at different times with the Sheriff's Department or somebody yeah. else. So, um, And right now with the Orange County Sheriff's Department and the Windsor County Sheriff's Department a little bit... Um, a little bit? A little mm. bit messed up right now. <laughs> a very little bit. Uh, it's, um, you know, with two new sheriffs, it's, it's yeah. created, uh, you know, some issues. So it also gives two new sheriffs a year to figure out what their staffing is going to look like, what contracts they could take on, and and that sort of thing. Because you yeah. know, I mean, uh, we had gotten so our, our typical constable budget is, mm -hmm. let's say, in around the fifty thousand dollars a year, um, and and we have not been spending that, by the way. So there's <laughs> been savings there, um, which is good for your pocket, but not good if you're asking for those services, right? right. Um, but we did ask, you know, just to put it in perspective, we did ask the sheriff's department what would it look like if you gave us a officer for what we would say is the time we want to see and it was about $125,000 so yeah. um, a, a very large bump um, so we yeah. decided as a board let's let's pause on that one <laughs> like she was saying let's see what some of these other communities may do and maybe we could fit in with those communities like a year or two down the road but at the same time let's make us a little more competitive so that maybe we can get some of these hours done the, we already talked about, but the White River Valley Ambulance is $26,000 of increase, and the, you know, percentage-wise, that's the largest increase um, for services for the ambulance. And then the last 22,000 would be what I would say is the normal stuff, like you know, all those little things of of uh, you know, adding uh, wage increases for employees, um, you know, some supplies and. Uh, different appropriations and things like that. So that's kind of the, the other 22,000. So um, so that's kind of the breakdown. Um, some things that we have been at, our town has been very lucky with is a combination of one, for five years we do have that extra revenue that helps us offset some of these costs. Um, of course we have to be careful because after five years that's gone away. <laughs> um, the same At the same point, um, we have the, um, lost my train of thought now. So the revenue uh, is, has increased and. Uh, you know, American Rescue Plan? American no. Rescue Plan money? Well, uh, yeah. well, that is good. I mean, mm -hmm. we do have some American Rescue Plan money that we have, mm -hmm. um, have purchased um, already some things for the sewer um, plant that we probably would have asked the taxpayers at some point. 
and we do have some money that's allocated that we can take care of of some of the matching money mm -hmm. of some of the projects that we're doing. Um, yeah. Oh, the so our budget, if oh the grand list. So the grand list going up is what actually helped our budget out the most. So. Um, the grand list has taken a, usually grand list doesn't move a whole lot during during the year. Um, our grand list has actually moved up quite a bit, so that has absorbed roughly about half of the increase. Um, so if, if normally, it, let's say we didn't have the revenue, the extra revenue and the grand list didn't move, I mean, we're talking, you know, this budget would be like 10 or 12 cents higher, which, yeah. which um, I think if we were talking um, for an average of like a quarter million dollar house in Bethel, every penny is every penny is one hundred and fifty dollars a year. So, I mean, think of ten ten pennies or twelve pennies. What that would have done to everybody this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, we're definitely not the only ones in this. Everybody's in this whole thing. Yeah, I actually talked um, to Rochester today and, and he was like, what's your budget doing? And I told him and he was like, yeah, ours. He goes, well, we didn't have any growth in the grand list. So yeah. his, their budget's up too. And yeah. it's, you know, cost of doing business. So we've gotten lucky. I mean, it, you know, a lot of costs have gone up just like all of us buying things have gone up. Mm -hmm. um, the grand list has helped us this year. It doesn't mean it's going to continue to move and we are going to go through a reappraisal process so we'll rebalance that grand list out. Um, so I, I, I do feel lucky that, that we're in a good position. The um, overall, I didn't bring it with me tonight, but um, what I call the baseline budget, so that's the things on the warning for um, number 10. Well, it, it doesn't. What it doesn't include would be doesn't include the extra money for the library, right. the extra <clears> money for the <throat> recreational fund for the skate park, and the extra thousand dollars for the historic playhouse. If we vote that in, that is a, roughly about a little over two cents increase on taxes. Right. Um, and then if you add in the library, the skate park, and the Playhouse, it adds in about another 2.8 cents. So it's when you look at it, every $21,000 in the budget is about one penny that yeah. that we pay. And then, like I said, one penny is roughly a dollar, or $150 a year um, on a quarter million dollar house. So, so that's all the fun when it comes to the budget. Um, all fun and games. The, the next two Thanks budget informational meetings and stuff will definitely, if anybody wants to dive into it any deeper, yeah. like a certain thing, we'll be more than willing to answer all your questions. To go into things or more, with more meaning if there yeah. are things in there. So and I'm hoping to have a PowerPoint presentation at least for the 27th from Aldrich and Elliott for the bond informational. So okay. I haven't seen that yet, but hopefully so. Um, so yeah, so we'll meet February 20th at 6.30 and this will be the only thing on the agenda. And then... Um, okay. Town manager's report? So just remind people that taxes are due Oof. on the 15th, so Wednesday the 15th, so... She's just no, she's no fun. Okay. Uh, there you go. That's it. And I think... We will take your money ahead of time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. And I think the... <laughs> That's right. Thank you very much. That's right. There's yeah. <clears throat> Those most people are not bringing us candy. So thank you very. I said that to him. Like, where'd the candy come from? She goes, Where do you think? It's from Doug and <laughs> so uh, the town manager's report is mainly just updates on all the grants and stuff that Chris and I were just talking about, and um, working with Rita at Two Rivers to sub to do two more. Um, probably end up doing a partial pave, a paving grant for the portion of Peavine that we're going to have to dig up because we need to get the right height for that bridge. So that'll be that. And then working on maybe another uh, structures grant, a larger culvert replacement on Deering. So, but if that happens, that won't happen construction until 2024 because Lord knows we got enough going on. Mm. Um, the other thing is, if anyone's been following it, we've been talking about the Ways and Means Committee. They're considering this whole reappraisal um, situation about basically stopping giving towns $8.50 per parcel um, for to put towards our reappraisal. Obviously, we've been saving our money for years and adding a little bit more. Um, and then they're talking about instituting a state reappraisal program. So 
we wrote to Kirk um, White and um, Dick McCormick and heard back from Kirk. And then Mo and Judy attended a meeting with VALA, which is the Vermont Association of Listers. And we also heard from VLCT. And there, most of the recommendations that these guys did, that the House and Ways Means Committee heard, uh, were recommendations did not extend to establishing a single statewide reappraisal system because they are saying that there's currently 165 municipalities are gonna need reappraisals and of which only 42 of those 165 have, um, have reappraisals planned. But my email was to Kirk was, this doesn't make any sense for you to add more people to property valuation review the tax department when you could just pass legislation and say, instead of basing our reappraisal on what our common level of appraisal is every year, they could just pass legislation and say, boom, you gotta do one every eight years. Then still give us the 850 a parcel, but for towns that are hurting, we're already under contract to start in July, but for towns maybe that don't have the money, offer them some grants. I just think over the long haul, adding more people to the state of Vermont payroll to get them trained, to caught up, and the same point, they wanted to put a moratorium on, and that was a big problem mm. for us, saying, wait a second, We've already signed a contract. We can't be in breach of something for you guys to figure out. So they did take some testimony, and currently that legislation has, um, it's not been introduced, it's just draft legislation. So I don't think they got the excitement that maybe they thought they were gonna get, because Vala and VLCT was saying, no, you know, mm. let's, there's other ways to do this. And we'd given them our two cents, and then I just suggested that, I told Kirk I'd be interested to see what the other towns he represents had to say, but at this point Bethel wanted him to vote no. Um, it just seems like it's something they, that's being rushed that maybe they need to think out a little bit more. Did they provide the data of the towns that, because if you go, I think it's, I could be wrong, but if you go below 85% or above 100 and yeah, you have 10 to or 15%, it automatically triggers a... Yeah, it says the town, if the town grand list falls below 85% of the fair market value or yeah. rises above 115%, then the law requires the town to reappraise. Mm -hmm. And it says... But out of those, did they say how many of them are says, currently there or no? Well, it said in their most recent equalization study that um, in 2022, um, that the majority of the municipal grand lists are well below fair fair market values. In fact, in 2022, the statewide CLA was 83.1% of fair market value. So I'm not saying towns don't need reappraisals. They do. Yeah. We should have had one a while ago. We're like at 13 or 15 years, which is way yeah. too long. But um, it seems like I just have a hard time believing that the state taking this over is going to make it any more efficient. And you certainly can't have a one-size-fits-all. Bethel is not Burlington. So... I just think, and, and I believe ours just, is at 88. Yeah, right I just now, got which, the most which ours went down like five percent over last year. Yeah, I, and I, Royalton's went down even more. They went down like eight percent or something. So yeah, that's that's an anomaly. Yeah, I mean, COVID made this an anomaly. Yeah, oh, it's huge. You're right. I it's mean, a we, huge the bubble. The price of property is just. <clears throat> I mean, right on Christian Hill, there are two properties side by side that went for over eight hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That five years ago mm -hmm. would have barely made four. Yeah, right. when we had a property you know, in Bethel that I think was valued at around four to 500,000, it sold for 1.6 million. It's like, mm. you know, so you're right. It's just completely people coming that in. That was right paying, next to your house, Doug. But coming in and no. paying three times. <laughs> your yours is going up and now. And then cash. <laughs> so you're right, yeah. I, I think you're, you're I, totally I definitely, right. it's gotta come it's back gotta down. Come back. Necessarily. Well, it'll be interesting to see how the reappraisal and, and what happens. Yeah. You're right, there's still a housing shortage. So there's still a housing by. shortage, and we are a climate go to state. That's right. I did, I did read about We're going to be getting climate you refugees. You should see this year. I did read about that. The You're local right. working folks are not buying these houses. No. The houses that are selling like this are people cash. that come up for a weekend they were cash, or maybe cash, was... every two months. So we're, we're exasperating, I think is the word, our housing shortage by these houses selling the way they are. I mean, the, by one, one of those, both those houses that sold were people that worked in the area. Yeah. One is retiring, the other one moved to Maine. Mm -hmm. 
but the houses are there, but they're gone for working people. Yeah, and we know so, people who've put their house on the market, got an offer, but couldn't sell because they couldn't afford to move anywhere else to find a place. So, so and you know how different. difficult the um, mm. formula for the school budget is to work with, mm. and all those, the school budget works on like four different formulas in the state. So there's the equalized pupils. So there's so much they give you per child. Um, that's that's up like a thousand over a thousand dollars a kid, which that's a, a large jump. And then then you have the yield rate of the state, and then you have your common level of appraisal. So there's all these different pieces that tie in, and they always usually just move like very small. And this year they're all like one's way up ten percent, one's down, one's. Oh, it, I mean, I don't even know how they even figure out that calculation <laughs> now. I don't either. Um, but that's it. Just a reminder that you know the taxes are due and think, um, town reports out. Uh, one more thing. I'd oh, like yeah. to sure. Say. I think it's important that that it's going to be on uh, Orca, but that people understand that a townwide reappraisal is good for the town. Absolutely. And it's good for us because if it's done well. Mm -hmm. Probably 90% of the people are not going to see a ch much of a change in their taxes. It just rebalances everything. Yeah. So it does. You're your right. property is worth twice as much, but so is everybody else's. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. And and if you have a home that you haven't done any main, you know, any work to, like built an addition, this and that. So maybe there's depreciation that needs to be applied to your property that you're not receiving. Mm -hmm. Yet maybe your neighbor has remodeled their entire house, mm -hmm. and then so yeah, so they're going to come up, but you know you may. Be qualified for depreciation, other things that haven't been applied I've in the past because no one's been looked. Negative comments. Yeah. Your taxes are going oh, no. through the roof. No. Well, no, if it's no. done right, it, they aren't. They're You're not. right. It, it's basically trying to bring everybody into whack so that we yeah. know, and especially when you haven't been in homes for 13 years, it, right. you know, you've certainly missed some stuff because zoning permits don't apply to what's going on inside. So I, the biggest that's a movers good point. will be anybody that had just built a house in the last couple of years. Yep they will probably see a, a bit of a relief. Yeah. And then individuals that maybe had a house that have done some remodeling to it, make it up 10, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. may have to pay a little bit more. But a majority of people like Dave's saying probably won't see anything, any reflection on that, which... Um, that should be good. So, well, yeah, so looking forward to that. To the minutes. Uh, meeting minutes from the 23rd of January. I didn't see anything unless Paul saw nope. something. No, they look good. I have a motion good. to accept. Okay, Paul's got a motion to accept the meeting minutes. Second. Second by Dave. All in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. ayes have it. And uh, we had other communications that were in there. There's the finances, there was rec minutes and some legal stuff and nothing. That's shattering. Yeah. So that's it. I hate to bring it up, but I'm mm -hmm. going to. Mm -hmm. Have we made any kind of engineering plans or whatever t for Wright Road? Mm -hmm. or are we still waiting to see when who comes out of the what happens? So we are so we are doing a project down by Brian's house. Uh, we're doing a culvert ditching replacement down there. But Wright Road itself, along with Gilead, we're waiting until April to figure out. I've talked to the lawyer recently. We have this newer letter to see about an easement to offer someone and see what's going to happen there before we move forward with a possible, are we going to make it a trail on Wright Road? Or are we going to just make it all class four? What are we going to do? So we're also looking at, um, uh, you know, some other pending cases right now and watching that as well. But we won't deal with that now until April. And I do have, we have some other discontinuances. We have some other discontinuances too, a part of Tufts Road, you know, or Sugar Hill. Mm -hmm. There was a piece added way back when, and then the five that were added in 2010 that I told you I had Gene in researching. So it looks like mm -hmm. we're going to be ending up doing several discontinuances or, or, reclassifications mm -hmm. in April, not just looking at right in the upper piece of Gilead. It's good to do them all at the same it, time. It will be, yeah. It'll be much a, easier to just do it's them It's a lot all. of visitations, but we'll just, you know, we have mm -hmm. to go to all the sites. Right. But, um, yeah, so we're going to try to take care of um, 
April's you nicer to walk around. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Well, we'll see. We might have mud up to our... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it could be end of April, beginning yeah. of May, but we'll definitely... Yeah. It's more of a spring thing yeah. at this point. All right. Anything else to come before the board this evening? Otherwise, we will have a meeting again next week, next Friday, uh, mm -hmm. Monday at 6.30. Don't so be spreading it'll that be, rumor. It'll be just the, just the budget and yeah. informational meetings. Yeah. Um, so budget and that for the water as yep, well? Yep, it'll be and the water. town meeting warning and water bond budget, just the same, you know, things. And we'll be prepared to ask if anyone has very, you know, specific questions about any section of the budget. We'll be happy to answer that for you. All right. So unless I hear anything else, so just need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <coughs> so moved. Okay. All in favor? Second. Third. Did you Aye. <laughs> no. I did. Paul oh, did. Oh, okay.